Okay, this is a summer loadout of what's in my pack. We're going to just start with what I would consider the, the essentials and work into a few comfort items, non-essentials, but pretty useful nonetheless. Okay, start with clothing here. I always have some sort of a, a thin outer shell breathable layer that I can put over the top of a really thin fleece or my puffy or both and this provides just an extra layer of durability for these a little bit more fragile layers that I don't want to get torn up if I'm going through some brush or something. I'm also going to be wearing or having with me some sort of a of a rain jacket. This is a Sitka dew point. It weighs about 10 ounces but I'll also have a poncho. So that'd be my my basic most basic rain system. I'll show you some additional upgrades here in a bit that can be useful. Okay, so again, this would be what's going to keep me warm, keep my core warm. If the temperature changes, if it starts to get wet, I've got I've got my warmth needs covered. But again, this is primarily for your your summer seasons when it's it's going to be in the 70s, 80s in the daytime, might get down into the 40s or 50s at night. Okay, so in my pack, I'm going to have a beanie, a spare pair of socks, change of underwear, and then another light fleece layer, a bottoms and a top, primarily for sleeping, uh, but can be added to these layers if it, if it does get fairly cold. Okay, so that's clothing that would be in my pack, not necessarily worn once I get on the trail. Okay, working up here, I'm going to skip this for a second. I'm going to have my water filtration system, water filter, at least two bags, depending on how far I'm intending to go. I'll always have at least two, if not three, sometimes four, depending on the distance. And if I have access to water along the route, toilet paper depending on the number of days I'll pack I'll pre-package the amount of calories that I figure I need for that day and I'll weigh it out this is 18.8 ounces for just a little over 2,000 calories of not just snacks I mean those are there's there's good calories in there um, but I know that that would get me through a day so if I'm going for two days I'd have two of these three days three of those and so on this would be my, what I'm going to consider my uh, essentials kit. So it's going to have spare batteries for my flashlight. It's going to have a portable charger for my phone. It's going to have my knife, first aid kit, uh, hygiene needs. All that stuff would be in, in this bag here, which I'll have to do a separate video specifically of those items. <clears throat> then usually in pockets or perhaps in a small fanny pack is going to be things that I, I use readily. Uh, satellite communicator, flashlight, compass, uh, really lightweight but strong pair of tweezers for taking care of ticks, a little bit of fire starter, a lighter, my basically my wallet contents, driver's license, a little bit of cash, uh, a little bit of ibuprofen, something to clean my glasses. And that is more or less my base kit minus sleep systems. So that brings me to the sleep system options. So if I'm going as light as possible and it's, it's in the off season and I'm not expecting a lot of bugs, then something like this, this is a, a Dyneema tarp. It weighs 6.2 ounces. It's about 8 by 10 is more than sufficient. I can tarp that in a number of configurations. I'll stay dry, uh, I can block wind. It's a very effective shelter, but it doesn't have a floor, um, nor does it have any sort of a bug netting. This would be the, the uh, stake and, and essentially tarp bottom kit that I would, or ground cloth kit with a little bit of extra cordage that I would have with me. And I, if I'm taking this tarp, I would throw that in with that tarp, and that would be 
the stakes that I would use to tarp that. It's already got the, the cordage I need, plus a little extra cordage if, uh, if I needed more options for tarping it. Okay, so then this would be an ultralight tent option. This is the XMED Pro 2 Plus. It's, it's big enough for two adults and, a, and two wide 25-inch pads. Um, it's it's not going to be the most roomy tent in the world. It's uh, it's a tent that is going to keep the bugs out. You're going to get your sleep, and that's about it. But it's not a tent you're going to want to spend a few weeks in, you know, hunker down in a in constant rain. Okay, so this is my sleep system as far as my uh, this is a sleeping bag sleeping pad system that I have now. This includes in this bag here, which is about four pounds, includes my Thermarest pad, which is the, the thicker, newer NXT version, but it's also the 25 inch wide pad. It's got a, a down quilt, it's got a pillow. It's also got a, a bivy system that's kind of integrated into the, the pad itself, so I can't roll off my pad, and it has a little bit of extra insulation built into that so I could take just my pad and that bivy system with with the two and a half ounces of apex on the outside of it and leave the leave the uh, the down part home if I was not expecting temps below the 50s and that would be comfortable but if I'm expecting temps potentially in the 30s 40s and so on then this system here is as comfortable as I could ever expect. There's a few, there's probably half a pound of convenience weight in this larger stuff sack, which is also the pump sack and the pillow and the, the extra down, just in case, you know, the, the down versus just going with, with the, the bivy system. Those things all add a few extra ounces for convenience and comfort, but Good night's sleep, in my opinion, is, is definitely worth it. Now, if I'm only going on a day hike, I can leave that and that home. I can just leave them out of the pack. And everything else here would get put in the pack. And the only things that would change, depending on if I'm mowing overnight, would be the, the sleep system and the tent. Okay, so the only other thing I've got here is a couple of options for you know, compartmentalizing thing. This is a really lightweight Dyneema fanny pack that I can put on the chest strap of my of my backpack. Stuff sacks, Dyneema stuff sacks. This stuff sack here can actually operate as a pillow if necessary and turn it inside out. So all of my clothing, for example, will go in this waterproof bag. It's a bit of a roll top design. Okay, so moving on to some convenience items that may or may not go depending on the conditions. So this is a down vest which I can combine with my down jacket and between those two I can get an extra 10 to 20 degrees colder temperatures comfortably. It really keeps the core warm to have that vest underneath some sort of an outer shell with another down jacket. A thicker pair of socks, which if I need a double, if, if temperatures are cold, I can I can wear a slightly larger pair of boots and a thicker pair of socks, and I can get a lot wider range of temperature comfort. These are just shorts, essentially long knee-length shorts that I made out of a polypropylene underwear, like military-style polypropylene underwear. It's fairly thick, but it's fairly lightweight, and if even even conditions down into the the winter temperatures if i was to put these over the top of my my pants my hike pants especially if i was to also put essentially a thermal bottom underneath i could i could go down into into the teens and be comfortable hiking around or even sitting around so something like this gives me a, a wider range of comfort and and safety uh in my my pant layer Okay, so talking about rain gear, depending on if I'm expecting a lot of rain, this is a this is a basically a kilt. It's uh, it's just going to look like a 
about a three by two by three or two by four tarp uh, that I can wrap around my my legs. And if I have a if I have my rain jacket on my torso and this around my legs, all but my feet. You know, my feet will get a little bit damp, or my lower legs might get damp, but everything else will stay more or less dry, and it allows me to it breathes better than trying to wear some rain pants. So that's a good option for summer use. I've got a backpack cover that may or may not go. Again, if I'm expecting really inclement weather, I might want to have a backpack cover so I can set my backpack down and still, you know, be comfortable outside of, you know, when I'm at camp or something and still know that my, my backpack is covered. I can also convert this into an umbrella uh, with with my my hiking staff, the pieces off my hiking staff, and that makes it a little bit more comfortable environment instead of having to have a hot, sweaty jacket or poncho on. If it's a little bit cooler temps, or if I feel like I might need the, a, another layer, I've got a pair of lightweight rain pants. These are full zip-offs. They weigh about 10 ounces. Again, you know, it's a considerable weight penalty to have a pair of rain pants in your bag. However, it makes a huge difference if the temperatures are in the 50s and below, if you're wet and cold all day long, having a pair of rain pants, even just to swap out, if those were dry in your bag and my other pants were wet, I could pull those out and have a dry pair of pants to put on. Then I've got a little bit heavier duty rain jacket. This one is a little bit quieter texture, so if I'm hunting, this one's going to be the one I'm going to grab instead of the dew point, which is, like I said, about 10 ounces, and this one's about 14 ounces, so about a 3-ounce weight penalty to get a little bit more durable but quieter jacket. Set this back over here. Rain kilt. Poncho cover. Okay, then depending on the number of days, I might add extra toothbrushes. I like to take these little disposable toothbrushes. I usually take one for three days. I can reuse them a little bit. Um, if I need, if it's going to be really buggy, I can take bug repellent or I can take a bug net. If I'm expecting to have a lot of stream crossings or if I'm overnight and I feel like I'm going to need some in-camp footwear, these really lightweight water sandals are they're called randy suns and they're very light lighter than pretty much any flip-flop that you would have but i can cross streams in them i can actually put the insoles from my shoes inside these to give myself enough protection i could actually hike and i could hike in these if i'm getting blisters in my shoes for some reason <clears throat> uh my shoe blow out so, you know I have, a, I have a major shoe failure or something i've, I've got a backup pair that I, of something i can use to protect my feet if I need a strap or something for my sleep system to make it easier to, to put together, I can take a strap like that. Uh, extra sanitary things like these little uh, these little soap strips can be pretty convenient to have. I might want to have on my person a pair of leather gloves if it's really thorny conditions or really rocky and I'm constantly grabbing grabbing things as I'm climbing, that traversing kind of thing, having some gloves for those conditions can make a difference to protect your hands. I might want to have a pair of swimming trunks, especially if I'm there for more than a few days, I can use those to bathe in. If I'm in a, in a group setting, I can use these, I can put these on to cross a stream if I need to put everything else in my pack and so on. These are things that I typically will wear but I do consider them to be non-essential in the sense that it's, I could live without them. Knee pads, a good ball cap. And I'm going to have what I would consider my hunting only items. I'll have a bag with the items that I would need if I harvested game. Rubber gloves, some arm length rubber gloves, some game bags, some garbage bags, knife, replaceable blades. I've got some game calls. I've got a wind checker. Those kinds of things are going to be the essentials for a hunting situation. Same thing with tags. Now if I'm 
I wouldn't consider these necessarily a non-essential item. This is my belt. This, this is a belt that I made just out of a piece of, of uh, strap webbing material and buckles. Works great for my pants. Not everybody has pants that are necessary that need a belt. A belt can be a useful item to have, though. I might pack a slightly lighter pair of gloves that would replace these potentially, although these ones are good for, you know, getting firewood and, and handling hot things in the fire because they are leather. Binoculars, rangefinder, extra, you know, extra food packs. I like these. They are great for having in the pocket just for a little extra energy, you know, 100 calories a pack. Phone scope adapter so I can have a mount my phone to uh, see through some sort of optic like a binocular or a spotting scope. Maybe some earbuds if I wanted to have music on the trail. Those are actually noise canceling as well. I've got the uh, basically a seat pad that also can hold my rifle. I've got a, a rain cover for my rifle if I have a rifle that I'm packing. So those are the things that I'm going to have in my pack. And the, the idea here is this, is this is the bare essentials. You know, there are, there are things that I could add. Uh, I, I could carry a very small little six-ounce hammock if I wanted something to sit in when I get to camp. I could carry a camp chair. You know, a camp chair is going to add a pound or two. You know, I could add, you know, obviously depending on the length of the trip, I might have additional bags of food or additional water capacity. And those things can change and come and go. But these are the items that are going to be my, my essentials, my bare necessities. Now, as the seasons change, I will probably add, for example, a second fleece. You know, if it's a, if it's a colder shoulder season, I'll probably have at least two fleeces. This is the Alpha Direct. Uh, this is an Alpha 90 um, hoodie. So if I had two lightweight fleece like that, that's going to extend my, my reach, extend my, my comfort range in colder temperatures. Um, if I'm in truly, truly dry conditions and I'm, you know, the likelihood of rain for a day trip or something is remote at best, then, you know, just leaving even the rain jacket behind and just taking the poncho is certainly an option. But by and large, these are all things that are going to be in my pack on every trip. I just might add a few extra items. And if I am not going overnight, I won't take the sleep system, and I certainly wouldn't take the tent, but I still would probably take the tarp. At six ounces, this is a go everywhere with me item, unless I have this, so I can just swap those out. And honestly, even sometimes it just gets, it's, it stays in my pack regardless, just because it is, it is a very useful item to have. If, if I ever got caught in a truly torrential rainstorm multi-day situation and traveling was for whatever reason not an issue maybe the lightning storms were preventing you know going over a pass or something like that and i had to keep gear dry and i need to be a little more comfortable being able to have a tent and a tarp for my ability to move around a little bit would probably keep me sane it might make make all the world of a difference um, so if any questions you might have about what I have here in my kit, what maybe I don't have that you might normally expect, uh, put them in the comments below and, uh, yeah, love to hear from you.